Now in verse 85, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the concept of worldly intercession. We've in detail talked about the intercession hereafter. But now here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about shafa'atan, the intercession in the world. Worldly intercession can be shafa'at al-hasanatan. As Allah is mentioning here, shafa'at and hasanatan, that is the intercession for a noble, for a righteous, for a good cause. And then there will be shafa'at the sir There will be intercession for an evil, for a shafa'at and sayyi'atan. That will be the intercession for an evil, for an unjust, just, or an unfair cause. Like, to make you more clear, when a person intercedes for somebody, intercedes or pleads for any person around him, like for a job or an admission in a school, in a college, an appointment or any promotion in the job or any posting in the job. A friend intercedes for all these things, but the person for whom the intercession is being done for any of these above and the person who is being interceded for is actually not deserving. He is not capable of taking up that job or being admitted the person is not qualified enough and the person is not appropriate for that job, for the appointment, for the admission or for the promotion. Then this form of intercession is what? It is shafa'atan sayyiyatan. And this has been condemned. This is forbidden. Because it will be clearly, it will be clearly a dishonesty. It will be unfair and this will not be just. This will be falsehood and this will be cheating. But in the contrast, if the person who is interceding or pleading for a person in any of the matters for which the person is very well qualified, he's capable, he's deserving, he's suitable, then this intercession is what? Shafa'atan hasanatan. This is the righteous, this is the pious, and this is the intercession for a good cause. And as you must have experienced, there, there are many people in the society of today who are qualified, who are deserving, and they are deprived of their due rights just because of these unlawful intercessions of for the incapable and underqualified or the non-deserving individuals. This is injustice. And it is merely because of this unlawful intercession by the wicked people that people who are qualified, who are deserving, who are capable, who are suitable for the posts, for the appointments, for the admissions, for the promotions, they stay behind and this is all injustice and this is all falsehood by the wicked people. And this causes frustrations, this causes social unrest. The people who are qualified are then frustrated and this causes them to turn into delinquents and robbers and decoits and this is, creates unrest in the society. And not only for all these causes, there can be intercession for the monetary help or for the support of a person who is poor and needy and deserving. So if a person intercedes or pleads any other person to help, to support a needy and a poor person, so this also will be shafa'atan, hasanatan. This will be a virtuous deed. Like, you see, if a person, a woman comes over to me and she asks for help, monetary support for like the medical treatment or the surgery of her husband 
and she is in a crisis. But then I am in a state of affair that I can't help her out. I am not monetar monetarily in a position to support her. But then I think of it that I have a friend who generally spends a lot of charity so and she's affording as well so i take this woman and i take her to my friend and there i intercede i plead i try to convince my affording friend that this woman is narrating the true story and she is honest and she is actually poor and needy and she is now actually in a state of crisis the whole story is real it's no fake story. She's not being dishonest. She's just not trying to cheat us. No. And my supporting her and my backing her up and my interceding for her, my pleading for her and convincing and motivating my friend to support her. And she spends. She gives her like um, 50,000 rupees. Now, you know what? My friend who is going to spend 50,000 rupees in as charity in the path of Allah to support that poor woman will obviously, no doubt, will obviously be rewarded. But you know what? As according to this verse of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us what? That I who pleaded and I who interceded and convinced her to help her will also be, will also be rewarded with the same reward despite the fact that I did not even spend a penny. So a person who is guiding for something or who is interceding for something which is noble will also be rewarded by all the reward of the person who is actually being, who is actually doing it practically. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand all this.